Go ahead, buddy. Are you ready to rock? Is she coming? Yeah, she'll be here shortly. She'll be here shortly. Yeah. All right. It is 7 p.m. Um, welcome to the City Manistee Planning Commission, June 2nd, 2022. Uh -huh. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please take roll. Take roll. Commissioner Slowinski? Here. Commissioner Szymanski? Here. Commissioner Mamberto? Commissioner Weiner? Here. Commissioner McBride? Here. Commissioner Yoder? Here. Chair Whitliff? Here. Thank you. Uh, approval of agenda. This time the Planning Commission can take action to approve the June 2nd, 2022 agenda. Is there a motion? I'll, I'll make, make a motion. Second. Motion by Bob, second by Mick. Any discussion? None. Please take roll. Commissioner Slowinski? Yes. Commissioner Szymanski? Yes. Commissioner Weiner? Yes. Commissioner McBride? Yes. Commissioner Yoder? Yes. Chair Whitliff? Here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, no. It's not a fiberglass. Get Raise your hand. Fiberglass is getting in the brain. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. Conflict of interest. Is there any member uh, that has any conflicts with tonight's agenda? None? Okay. Approval of minutes. At this time, the Planning Commission can approve the May 5th, 2022 meeting minutes. Is there a motion? A motion by Roger. Second. Second. Mick, discussion, motion, I mean. Oh, you got it, discussion? Discussion. Yeah. Yep. Okay. No discussion, please stick roll. <laughs> Commissioner Slowinski? Yes. Commissioner Szymanski? Yes. Commissioner Weiner? Yes. Commissioner McBride? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Yoder? Yes. Chair Whitliff? Yes, thank you. Correspondence, is there any correspondence? No. None? Okay. Public comments on agenda-related items. Uh, if there's anybody in the audience that would like to uh, comment on the agenda tonight. Please come up to the podium, name and address. You have up to three minutes. Nobody? Okay. Uh, next presentation by Chief Glass. Good evening. Good evening. It's really quick. For those of you who don't know, my name is Josh Glass. I'm the police chief of the Manistee City Police Department. And I appreciate this opportunity. I don't have a formal presentation but I wanted just to come here and let you know who I am and what our organization is about, especially um, being part of the city leadership, that you just have a little bit of information about the police department. I know that a lot of times the planning commission and police functions don't overlap, but again, part of leadership is opening the door, building a bridge. This is who we are, this is what we do. So uh, like I said before, my name is Josh Glass. I'm the police chief. I've been with the city of Manistee Police Department for about 18 years. Uh, we currently are full staff, the first time in a number of years. Uh, we have 13 police officers, and that includes myself. Uh, we have nine patrol officers who are supervised by two patrol sergeants. We also have a detective sergeant who's a uh, plainclothes detail. Um, our officers handle about 5,000 calls for service a year. That's when someone picks up the phone and calls for a police officer, regardless of what it's for. In addition to calls for service, we also conduct criminal investigations, traffic enforcement, ordinance enforcement. Uh, we also enforce some zoning. Uh, we also have officers assigned to each school as school liaison. Um, our officers respond to fires. Four of them are certified firefighters and actively fight fires. And we also have three officers who are assigned to our county uh, dive team. So. In a nutshell, that's kind of a mile view, but that's our organization, that's how it's staffed, that's our basic function, and that's kind of what we're about. So again, nothing too formal, just building a bridge between this commission and the police department, and I appreciate that opportunity. If you have any questions at all about the police department, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Any questions? Oh. And you have officers assigned for white, correct? We have... Yeah. 10 police off 10 of the 13 officers are assigned in one way or another to blight our city is broken up into eight districts eight police officers and the two patrol sergeants supervise that enforcement uh, summer so april to august is our highest call volume it's also the peak of our blight enforcement 
I know that I just talking with uh, Katie or yeah, Katie, uh, one of our sergeants coordinate with her. So we coordinate with different city staff on a number of blight issues. So it keeps us extremely busy in the what summertime. Do you use when they do see a blight, because there's some areas that are pitiful and have been for years, like sure. Davis and Sixth and certain places, sure. and nothing is ever done. I mean, you never see anybody over there issuing tickets to the landlords or or the people living there, you know? Just, just how do you, when you say they handle it, what do they do? Well, first of all, we try to educate. Now, this is our third year of this process, so we're kind of moving beyond the education. Our officers have issued a number of citations already. Um, we've taken people to court. We actually had a demolition last year on that street, which we plan to take to court again to clean up, because yeah. it's not doesn't meet our expectations of demolition. Um, so when I talk about enforcement, it's about giving warnings, working with them, issuing citations, taking them to court, whatever the judge decides, working with that. And sometimes when we have these significantly blighted structures, it takes months and months. In some cases, it takes years. I mean, we, we demoed a house on a high street that essentially took seven years to get down. Now, our, fortunately, our city council designated funds, which really removed a large hurdle in the demolition process. But, you know, when it comes to structure, it's, it's, it takes a lot of time. It eats up a lot of time. It's very uh, time intensive. But our officers do a great job. They, they work with people. So we, we face a number of challenges in blight. Um, so when I, to go to your question, we issue citations, we take them to court, and we have a newly formed neighborhood restoration and beautification uh, committee, which is really just getting going. And there's a lot of solutions coming out of that committee, which uh, are pretty exciting. So it's a matter of throwing a number of resources at a problem. Most of the people are rental homes, and these slum landlords, they don't care who they rent to as long as they get the money. And so, I mean, a citation doesn't mean nothing if they were unable to rent that house until it was up to some cool. kind of code and cleaned up, that would sure help put a bomb under them, I think, you know? Certainly, and we also work with Safe Built uh, on rental inspections, but um, it's not just the rental homes that are an issue. One of our philosophies this year, we've kind of shifted that if you have a structure and it's a rental and the blight deals with the structure, well, that's not the tenant's obligation. That's the landowner's obligation. So we issue citations to the landowner. If it's a tenant issue, garbage, things like that, we typically issue to the tenant. Now, if it's a repeated problem, regardless of the problem, we give them both tickets to kind of motivate that situation. But uh, and again, it's a, it's, it's a long process, and officers spend a lot of time doing it, and they're happy to. But when we talk about blight, we talk about trash, rubbish, junk vehicles, houses, uh, it's a number of things. So I'm, I'm happy to see the impact we've had when we first started. You know, we, we really started this in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. And to see what the results in two years, it, it, I see it every day, so I feel the impact. It's hard to see it because... When it comes to blight, you only see the blight left behind. You don't see what was cleaned up. Right. So we've made some pretty good progress on it. Um, and I don't know if you have access to the shared drive, but our presentation for 2021 has our, all of our blight stats, so you can kind of really see at least quantified what our officers have done. And I know there's a lot of those red tags on homes that were working and doing things to improve or do whatever, but never got permits. And the, those signs are faded and the houses are just sitting. Is there some way to get them into permits and back up moving? To We're working with Safe Built to work through those issues. You know, the city contracts with Safe Built, uh, the inspector. And my understanding of those is, is someone was uh, was either working without a permit or they weren't a licensed contractor. So we work closely with Safe Built to kind of work through those issues. Ultimately, what we want is progress. We want things to get fixed or tore down. Uh, but unfortunately, sometimes it, it results in taking them to court, getting court order, tearing it down ourselves. So uh, again, the, the biggest thing is it's, it's a problem that hasn't been created in the last five years. It's a multi-decade problem and requires a multifaceted approach. And the city of Manistee is taking that multifaceted approach. Are there any questions? Yes, one of the, th the comments is, you know, I, I, I know of at least two cases where your officers not only worked the blight issue, but helped them connect 
with people to get them resources yeah. to do because not everyone is blight because of negligence. Sometimes it's literally just pure finances or, or, or ability. And I know in one case, uh, um, the, the, the person was elderly and just couldn't get the job done. And we see a lot of those cases where it's not a matter of, like you said, negligence. Uh, sometimes it's an elderly population living by, they just don't know how to do it. They don't, they don't, know, they don't have family nearby and officers do. Again, it, it consumes a lot of their time, but they're more than happy to do it just to put them in touch with resources. And in one case, the one I think you're talking about, yep. we call them and we say, hey, we almost worked as if we were a family member to, to get that resolution because we knew that they had their, they had the will to get it fixed. They had the finances to get it fixed. Let's kind of build the bridge and let's get it done type thing. So again, mm. it's, it's kind of a complex problem. There's no one solution. There's no one angle to the problem. So uh, I like the direction we're going. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Are there any other questions? Um, I, I have one, Chief. Um, now that we're in the midst of summer, there's a lot of yard sales and things like that. And <clears throat> the signage that's in the city right away uh, I noticed last weekend on telephone poles and, mm -hmm. uh, in, like I said, in the city right away. I know there's an ordinance against that. Yeah, we seize that. Uh, we, we, in the past, we've tried to contact the owners, and and some of our officers still might. But as you can imagine, that chews up a lot of your time. Mm -hmm. I've instructed them to take the signs, put it at the PD, contact when they have time. If it's on a, a pole, like a power pole, we take that down. So we, we instruct our officers to, to be mindful of that. Unfortunately, sometimes it blends in and we don't do a great job, but um, uh, it's not allowed in the city right away. And it's something we try to pay attention to. Um, the easy fix is, you know, some of our realty companies have those in the city right away. They're very responsive usually when we contact them. Uh, but the yard sale sign you see on the, on the utility pole, we take that, take it down. Because as you know, it's a compound or it's contagious if you see one sign it sends a message well i can put this sign here and it's the same thing with parking in the city right away it's contagious yep. can you put the signs on those little little right. things like real estate signs in the ground to point to where garage sale is or they're just not allowed here they can't be in the city right away whatsoever but you can get a property owner to have them put on you on their property yep. and ask with that thought in mind, is there a place or could we put the paper directions on how to put a garage sales sign out properly? Well, what we do, we publish... Before we go through all the problem of taking them down, then what we just tell them how to put it up? We publish every spring. And oh, we you try do. to get it every couple months as a reminder. Okay. Uh, uh, it's basically a poster that says, you can put it here, you can't put it here. Yeah, it's right. It illustrates the public. Yeah. Um, and that's something... As we approach midsummer, we can probably republish on our social media page okay. just to educate our community. Yeah, and if you have a problem, I mean, you know. Certainly. No, I'm good, Mike. Thank or Mark. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Chief? Chief, any other issues that the Planning Commission uh, should be aware of as far as the community or the cities involved on your side? Nothing that I can think of. Again, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come here and, and basically just build a bridge to know if there is any issues that you can contact me or our office and just educate this group about what our organization is and how we're staffed and what we can do. So again, I appreciate that opportunity. And you've been with the Ford for 18 years? 18 years. <laughs> well, I worked narcotics for about four years undercover. Everybody thought I got fired. They, they didn't see me around for about four or five years. So, um, That's a whole other can of worms I've heard, not the, this, but is is that getting to be a quite a problem here, the, the narcotics? It certainly presents challenges. It does, community. that's what I've heard. And it's not separate from issues such as blight. I mean, right. it all kind of ties in together. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think you're doing a good job. I mean, I made you for 75 years, so you must be doing something right here. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you for all you do and, and, your, and your crew. Yep. Thank you for the opportunity, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. New business, uh, dumpster and closure compliance, Painted Lady Saloon. Painted Lady. See, the applicant is not here. She was here. Oh, no. 
And I did speak with the chair on this, but um, I can let the rest of you know. She did call me yesterday and left a voicemail um, inquiring if her attendance was necessary. I called her back today. She didn't answer. Um, I strongly encouraged her to show up. Um, you know, I, I said, you submitted your letter, but there may be questions that the commission has that I can't answer. So I would strongly, strongly encourage you to be here. Um, I did not hear back from her. I was hoping that she still would show up. Um, um, with with that, I would ask for a table on this, as, as we uh, discussed earlier. Yeah. Motion. Yeah. Have a motion to table uh, the Painted Lady Saloon dumpster enclosure compliance. There a second. Second. Second by Shelley. Discussion. None. Please take roll. Commissioner Slowinski. Yes. Commissioner Smiansky. Yes. Commissioner Weiner. Yes. Commissioner Lamberto. Yes. Commissioner McBride? Yes. Commissioner Yoder? Yes. Chair Whitliff? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Old business, dumpster enclosure compliance, TJ's pub. Oh. So. Hi. Hello. Um, so I was here a month ago to talk about my dumpster. As you know, my dumpster is in Manistee Beverages parking lot owned by James. Um, I expressed to you guys that James does not want anything permanent on his lot, so I know we kind of had this discussion of doing a shield or something. Um, we have since talked, and uh, he does not want that either. So he, he does not want anything around the dumpster, which I'm totally in agreeing with him on that. Um, so he is here. If you guys have any questions, um, I know he was strongly encouraged to be here address you guys. All right, thank you. Mr. Brudry? Clerk will be the lady Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. How can I help? <laughs> Questions by the committee? Uh, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll start, I guess. Okay. And you own the property where this uh, particular uh, dumpster is located, correct? Correct. Okay, and we've got a policy about to cover or <laughs> uh, shield somewhat of the dumpster. You understand that? I do. Okay. Now, do you plan on shielding this dumpster? It's not my dumpster. It's not your dumpster? No. It's my property. It's not your my property. property. We, my underst we understand that it's your dumpster. Okay. You don't use that? I do not. You're not using it? Lindsay's a friend. I allow her to use the parking lot to house her dumpster. Because okay. there's no other place for her to take her garbage. That wouldn't be overflowing. The, the, the dumpster that's provided for the downtown area is not enough for Lindsay to use. Right now it's currently filled with everybody's recycling. Mm -hmm. A whole other issue. Yeah. If she was to use that dumpster up above in the city parking area there that the DDA paid for, it'd be overflowing every single day. Okay, so then you're saying that it's a city problem because the city has a dumpster that's not big enough to maintain what the city businesses put out. All I'm saying is, is that if she had to use that dumpster, it would be a city problem. There'd be garbage everywhere. Hmm. So never uh, like on the subject. I'll pass then, because I'm confused. It's her dumpster on your property, and you don't want to cover it, and we have an ordinance that says we should. Is that where we're at? Yes. Okay. Well, I'll pass it to uh, Marlene. I'm sure she's got questions. Go ahead. Is there hmm. anything that you would agree to that may be like a fencing on wheels that would slide and to slide back to cover it? It wouldn't be permanent, like maybe those plastic fences are attractive enough to hide the dumpster? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think the bigger issue here is it's not so much having a structure around the dumpster as it is, mm -hmm. it's just being that added element on my property. It's one thing to have the dumpster there so that Lindsay can utilize it so that she doesn't have trash overflow mm -hmm. um, in the city. Mm -hmm. If we put something like that on my property, there's a couple of things that could happen. In the grand scheme of things, if Lindsay, for example, decided she wanted to sell her business, then the person that buys it's going to look at me like, I want to use this. What if I don't like that person? Let's just be honest. <laughs> uh, or vice versa. What if I sell my property and 
the new person that's in my property doesn't get along with Lindsay or they want the dumpster exactly. and everything out of there. Exactly. And then we have an additional issue. And it all comes down to cost for her because she has to put that cost in there. Yeah. Well, you should have it written in agreement then because of that problem. And if you have a written agreement, it would explain it either goes with the property or it goes with your property. But yeah, if you were to sell, he could say, hey, get that out of there and she would be screwed or either way. But I, I would sign a piece of paper, I mean, if you're going to continue this. I mean, my personal much. Go ahead, Mark, I'm sorry. Um, and this is probably a question maybe for Mick or anybody that would know how to answer it. The, so we have, we have businesses downtown. We want to invite more business. Mm -hmm. There's only one dumpster down there the that's city? available for the city? No. There's, there's several, but there's only one area that is convenient to her okay. uh, front which is behind it up and around the parking lot. So it's basically the but, and there's, I speed. believe there's two dumpsters in that stall, correct? Correct. So, but there's another dumpster corral further on down. But if they're being filled, I don't know what the agreement with the city is, but is it possible to have them removed more often or have a bigger right. dumpster right. put in? Or are, are we just saying, okay, if you're a business and you happen to get to it first, you can use the city one. If not, then the cost is on. Right. Why are we making business? that business? Right. Why yeah, are I we don't... making her go across the street to use another dumpster? If we are supplying the, the proper proposal. Well, it, it's because it's it's those dumpsters are located on city property. We don't have city property everywhere where we can build those dumpster corrals. Right, but if it's existing already, right. but it's not the right capacity, can we increase the capacity or increase the frequency of pickup? Right, exactly. That, that comes down to the contract with Republic yeah. for picking up it, the, those. That's companies. right, but I mean, it shouldn't be his problem. No. It's the city's problem, or, or, or the young lady's problem. It's much more convenient for us to run the garbage across the street. I remember you said that last time. Uh, because. Uh, when James was in the process of purchasing that building, we had to get rid of our dumpster. Uh -huh. um, and we did use that one behind whatever like outpost back there. And it was extremely difficult for my staff. I mean, they were throwing garbage in their cars, they were staining their cars. Uh, I had a couple guys cut their legs, you know, watch glass. It was a nightmare. So if that's what I have to do, like you'll probably see a little uh, golf cart sitting on Maple Street because I'll buy one and they'll use that to haul it over there. Oh, there I'm not, yeah. I can't expect them to carry their thing. Yeah. Are I mean, most of the businesses down River Street and they're pretty yeah. much intended, those roll like we have for residents? No, I don't have any of them. They're Very only the dumpsters. And you know, some areas, again, have on the other side and in other properties actually have some area behind them where they have dumpsters. So uh, it's just that where TJ's is, is landlocked and she doesn't have the property behind her, doesn't have right. any location to actually put a dumpster. The thing I, look, the thing I was looking at, I've driven by there a few times, what would be the feeling of moving that dumpster into the southeast corner of the parking lot instead of in the center there? Would that be an issue? Would that be hiding it back more around your building would hide the view of it a lot more? I thought that's where it was. I don't think that'd be an issue. Because that would probably help because when you're coming down River Street right there, yeah. you're going to look, you see there, but if it's back in the southeast corner closer to this building, it's going to be really hard to notice it. Well, yeah. would that cause any parking issues if, if it was moved into the southeast corner like the bottom scene? No. No? Yeah. Okay. The only concern I have is if Republican can get access to it if, there, if you do have cars parked there. I, well, that's right. usually where I park, so I'd be giving up my parking spot. <laughs> but uh, it would be at the kind of angle. Oh, yeah. Over. Your only choice is a parking spot or a dumpster. Now, which do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her keep the dumpster. <laughs> you see where I'm saying? Yep. Move it closer yeah. to the building. It's, it's going to kind of more camouflage where yeah. you're at. Yeah, would be. It would. I, I've driven by, well, Once many times, and it, it, this dumpster, where it is today, 
is hardly noticeable. Yeah, you, you, you gotta be look you gotta be looking yeah, for it. You have to look. And it's to me it's an easy in, easy out for Republic. Yeah. Uh, it to is. do that. Yeah. Sure. I don't I don't know if it would cause any stress putting it in the corner. I don't know. You know, so would they have anything to say about it? it if I could add, um, with the painted lady, Matt from a Republic, I'm slipping on his last name, he was very, very helpful, and he did say to let him know if any other property owners need a site visit to make sure that whatever they're pro proposing would work for Republic. Oh. So that may be um, something that he could come out and assess. Um, you know, you, if that's the route that the commission wants to take, oh, sure. um, you could, you know, make that motion and, um, we could pursue that, but then we could also reach out to Matt, and if things aren't going to work, then I can bring that back to you at the July meeting and update you um, on what happens. The drivers are usually pretty good too, because sometimes, you know, they, they put it too far back onto the, uh, the, the little bit of a lawn back there. I don't know if you could see it. I'll just go outside and say, you just move it. They're usually pretty good about all that stuff. So, as long as I catch them first thing in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a problem. We got to catch them. Yeah. yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. Mark, like Mark says it's, a, it's one you've got to look for. Yeah. You've got to let them come in, take a look, and see where they said might suggest it, and uh, let us go go for their uh, uh, knowledge. Because yeah, that, like everybody said, that's a hard one to see. Yeah, yeah. We can try to even just move it a little bit to help camouflage a little more. But I'm, I'm just curious, what is, what is your objections to having like a screen in front of it? You just don't want it, or you don't like it, or right. Both. Both. Yeah. I'm pretty particular. Really, the, the dumpster is the only added feature to the parking lot that I want. <laughs> yeah. I, know. I know. <laughs> um. And Lindsay does a great job, especially in the summer during the peak. The yeah. thing gets dumped three times a week, so okay. never an issue. Yeah. Well, there's never any trash or anything blowing around. So it's always no, nice. it's tidy always and sure. clean. Yeah. Like and, and we love that. Not like some of the other places. Yeah. No, that's yeah. true. Yeah, I don't be proud. Katie, mm -hmm. what does the language specifically say about sight lines to them? Um, so the requirement is that it should it shall be enclosed if visible from any other like adjacent residential uses or public streets. So um oh, okay. Yeah, so I think to an extent, um, you know, it is accomplishing the intent of the ordinance, especially with it being a one-way street is what I was thinking. If it's in that corner, mm -hmm. um, you know, at that point, there's really only a, a small portion of the entrance of that parking lot that it is truly visible from a public street. Um, because, yeah, I will say there are, there are dumpsters in the city that will not have to enclose because they meet the criteria for not having to enclose. Um, there you go. Put it in the corner, put a park a car in front of it, you'll never see it. And there, there you go, you take the car home at night and nobody knows it. It's a four wheel blockade that moves every day. Yeah, it moves every day. <laughs> you can have your parking spot back. <laughs> Any other questions, mm -hmm. comments? None? No. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So with that, um, we recall the date now or no? Yes, we will. Um, if we could have, what are the feelings having uh, Republic come out? Well, I, I, I'd like to make a motion that we exempt um, this dumpster from the requirement. Or do we say that by moving it, it meets the requirement? Or, or yes, mm -hmm. by by moving it to to the corner, it, it would meet meet the requirement. It would not meet, right? Okay, yeah. I would I would hate to say that we exempt it because that's right. going to be opening up a lot right. of our right. For right. others. But if they can move it to the corner, it meets the requirements not to be. And, and it may be effective to add to your motion, this is just a suggestion, take yeah. it for what you like, um, that they move it to the furthest extent possible that Republic allows 
right. for right. access to the dumpster. Right. Would and they have to come out and inspect that and approve that spot to be picked up? Um, they may. It, it could be as simple as a phone call. I mean, if they're familiar with the parking lot and the site, they might say, oh, yeah, push it all the way up. We can get it. Or they might say, hey, we'll drop it as far as we can the next time we come pick it up. I imagine, you know, from speaking with Matt previously, he seemed yeah. very open and flexible to helping um, everyone accommodate to this, this well. enforcement, so. Sure. Okay. And, and again, there are certainly mitigating circumstances oh, on sure. this particular property. Oh, yeah. But I think we should look at the problem, like uh, the young man was saying about the dumpster. If we have a problem with the city, not like Charlie was saying, not taking up, we should address that. Or is the enclosure? Well, let's, we're getting off. Yeah, yeah we're getting off the um, track, but I but mean. We can discuss that here in yes. a minute. But, yeah, that's uh, true. Okay. So are you good with the motion? Yes. Yeah. And with a suggestion on yes. the motion. The, so the motion would be that uh, the dumpster be moved as far as, uh, to the corner as yeah. practical South, by. Southeast corner. Southeast corner as, yeah. as practical from, from the standpoint of uh, uh, Republic. Right, right. Not second, man. Second, Roger. Any further discussion? None. Please take room. Commissioner Slawinski? Yes. Commissioner Szymanski? Yes. Commissioner Weiner? Yes. Commissioner Mumberto? <coughs> yes. Mumberto? I'm sorry, yes. I've got a frog in my throat tonight. Frog? Commissioner McBride? Yes. Commissioner Yoder? Yes. Chair Whitliff? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And we'll jump back into new business, but we did table the dumpster enclosure compliance with Painted Lady Saloon. Sure. They're here now. They are here now. They are so here. Yes, so I'm glad you came. They, they were going to table it. How do we, do we untable this or? <laughs> you untable it. done that. You untable it. Uh -huh. I make a motion that we untable since uh, the uh, participant. There may be here. a more formal term, but we can use untable. Yeah. <laughs> untable. You untable. <laughs> it's it's reopen. Stuff now. There we go. Actually, yeah. Actually, in some of the other meetings I've been in, it's it's actually a motion of untable due to. Okay, so that is the formal. Okay. okay I like it. Due to. Due to the due participant, to you know. COVID nineteen. Let's just say everything. Motion by the minute. applicant being in to second. Second. Right. Second by. Me. Second. Shelley, discussion? None. Please take a roll. Commissioner Slawinski? Yes. Commissioner Smansky? Yes. Commissioner Weiner? Yes. Commissioner Mamberto? Yes. Commissioner McBride? Yes. Commissioner Yoder? Yes. Chair Whitliff? Yes. Okay. Got that right. So, uh, applicant can come up uh, to the podium. Just name and address, please. Wilkins, and which address do you want? From my home or my business? Painted Lady. Please. 723 Kosciuszko. So, um, with this, you have two dumpsters, actually. You have a grease? Well, we have grease in, yeah, the garbage dumpster. Okay. Um, and so, Republic, if this was relocated, Republic would have a harder time. Picking it up? Right. There, I mean, he wrote a letter. Yeah. I'm yep. Uh -huh. You have the letter there? Yep. I'm, I'm just asking questions. So, um, or uh, maybe. And that dumpster, from what Matt from Republic said, it has to be on an angle uh -huh. like this. So, our enclosure would have to be really big because it has to, he said the truck has to pivot. So, that's why the dumpster sits the way it does right now because it's on an angle right now. It has, has to be that way, apparently. Yeah. yeah. The length of the truck is, is a problem coming in there with the forks. So does, did they look at any other sites on your property? Well, see, right next to us is two slices, which we don't own that right, right, right. property. And then the next address will be 715, which we do own that property. At the old highway, yes. Except for, to me, that would be more visible from Kosciuszko. But not if it was in an enclosure. Yeah, but I also will have a problem with my staff taking it that far. Yeah. And there will probably be garbage spill because they spill garbage right now and I have a hard time getting to pick it up. <laughs> and they don't have to go very far at this point. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but that would be the perfect solution is to move it down the old highway bar was. Well, yeah, but the problem I thought about with that too is it's all residents behind there. And once yeah. you move that dumpster there, you have flies, you have smell. Yeah. I mean, they're homes. People live there. Yeah, that's so true. It's not other businesses there. It's their backyards. Yeah. How about across the parking lot towards... Uh, Kosciuszko? Uh, yeah. Yeah, toward, yeah, McGill or whatever. Uh, he said that that would tear up the city, the curb there and everything. Oh. And, and, and the other... Kelly's, you know. He said it would tear up the sidewalk and the curb if, oh. he had, if that dumpster had to come in there off of uh, 8th. Huh. Yeah. And right now where it sits, I mean, you can only see it from A Street, and most of the time there's cars in front of it. That's what I mean. So I you can't really see, yeah, see you know it. what I mean? Yeah. See it that much anyway. I've lost track of how many times I tried to park where you see, oh, it's bad. Well, there's the dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and then it would take up three to four, uh, yeah. you know, which is revenue for us. I mean, that's money for us. Yeah, yeah. but you got the yeah. parking down at the other end. If right, part of that parking for the right. Parking. I mean, and we do now, but we have a lot of senior citizens that like to park, you know, close, close. as close as you can. And I hate to have them walk through that. I mean, I really do, especially in the winter. Yeah, that's a yeah, I don't know. It's a following services are what they are, and that's not always perfect either. So, <laughs> and we can't hold up garbage inside of our building in a blizzard in the winter time, and right. You know, because they can't get it out the door or through that parking lot all the way over to. Yeah, they do truck, yeah, trudge it through the snow. I don't know. Yeah, maybe this would do it. Or Katie, maybe this would meet one of the requirements where it doesn't meet the requirements. You know what I'm saying? Well, that. Back, that is back in is, like you say, it is in the location and the site view. Yeah, that's that is why she's before you all. Um, you know, I don't I don't have the authority to make that determination, but you do. Yeah. So um, ultimately, that will be up to all of you. I don't, and you know, necessarily is. have a recommendation in this scenario. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's for you guys to to decide. Cars parking mm -hmm. in there, Marco, and everything. Like the young lady says, yeah, you can hardly ever see it. I mean, and the only time you're that's true. Is even they're closed a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and to make her pay her cost, you know, whatever it may cost, and it may would probably be quite a piece of change today. I well, mean, well, and if if Republic is suggesting that she request a variance, I, that they're yeah. the expert, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, that's whose opinion we're seeking, right? Yeah, I, that's for sure. <laughs> I would say it's probably a you know a large factor to consider. Ultimately, you guys have the authority yeah. to make a property owner make it work, but um, I I mean I would say that it could carry some weight. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. At least the you Republicans come out there and looked at it. Yeah. So they've looked over the opinions of what would work and what won't work. Maybe so, provided. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to take that into account. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No. No. No, I think. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, okay. Discussion. Uh, is there a motion? Well, I would make that motion. I think that uh, Mark, if you don't mind, that we, uh, uh, like we did for the last one, actually, not uh, not uh, excuse, but uh, see that there was not a need for offensing around this particular this uh, garbage disposal or dumpster because of it didn't meet the requirements to have it. Offense, you know what I'm saying? And we have, we have a notation by Republic. Yes, plus the, you know, plus the, uh, right, notation from Republic about the relocation. Is everybody good with that motion? Okay. Is there a second? A second. Second by Marlene. Yeah. Any further discussion? Clean it up if you want. Please take roll. Yeah, Commissioner Selinski? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Smansky? Yes. Commissioner Weiner? Yes. Commissioner Mamberto? Yes. Commissioner McBride? Yes. Commissioner Yoder? Yes. Chair Whitliff? Yes. Motion approved. Yeah. Right. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Leave it as is. It's the best. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you for coming. Yep. Have a good one. Maybe we can get Republic. Yeah, they're the ones. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Public comments, communication. Is there anyone left? <laughs> anyone like to say there? anything? <laughs> no. Click, click. None. Okay. 
No other communications, correct? Okay, excellent. Staff reports? Um, I do have a brief update. Um, so Nancy kind of separated out the not packet, um, just a staff update item. So I have my weekly meetings with Mark Miller, um, the economic development director, and I had, um, well, actually Mike had met with him right after our last meeting and let him know that Roger was inquiring about the um, old medical center. So he did put together a, um, a little write up for that for you guys. And then he did indicate that he is going to um, start sending me these monthly reports um, that we can include in the packets. And then if there's ever a time, um, you know, you guys want him to come in, you can just, you know, let myself or him know. Um, I did let him know how Mark, you had indicated that um, you'd like to start getting, you know, every meeting or close to every meeting some department had or someone in um, that it wouldn't necessarily be you know every month but every when he's invited he might you know yep, come do a brief presentation or such so um, yeah the reports are just for your viewing um, and like I said he indicated that he could provide you know something like this for a monthly update for you guys so okay very good I enjoyed reading it, so yeah you know, Marco, that's been the, this block has been with the police for 18 years. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, <laughs> you and me both. He was hiding. Yeah, yeah he was. I guess. 18 years. Well, he was a patrolman for 10 years, and then he was yeah, uh, an undercover thought. officer. I thought you'd run into the guy. Oh, I actually to... have one more item for you guys, too. Sorry to interrupt sorry, you, Roger. Jane, no, I'm I just sorry. didn't want to forget about this. So, um, seeing that there hasn't been any special use permits or PUDs or big things that have come in so far this month, um, I have some minor amendments that I'd like to bring forth to you um, next month, it, as long as things stay slow. Um, I know Mike had mentioned previously, yeah, um, Mike had mentioned previously a, termi a built in termination date for special use permits. I think that one's, you know, an easy peasy added in, have the public hearing. Um, something that I wanted to bring to you all and potentially get um, a recommendation for is that it seems like I've had probably four or five property owners call me about putting up like a small storage shed or garden shed. And the way the ordinance is interpreted, um, or the way that I interpret it, is that in the residential districts, you're only allowed one accessory building. Now, it doesn't give me regulation to define size or um, you know something under this amount does not count as your one accessory building. Now, to me, that does feel um, you know a little restrictive. We have our lot coverage requirements in the city, so. Yeah you know, to an extent someone cannot build out an entire parcel. Um, but I am wanting to propose some language for garden sheds. Um, we have that in my, a couple of my townships. Um, Bear Lake does anything under 240 and eight feet at the eaves, 240 square feet, eight feet at the eaves. Um, Onekama Township does 144 square feet, a 12 by 12, I think that's a little bit more appropriate, counting as a garden shed that does not count as your one detached accessory building that you're allowed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. you know, typically that's something that I would encourage a property owner to pursue on their own. Um, but considering I've had, you know, multiple calls, it seems like, um, I just felt like that was something that, you know, we could take forward mm -hmm. as the city. I think when um, we passed that, it was, the lots were being big footed with all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. and there was no green space and you have to have so much right green space mm -hmm. well in the ordinance um at first i kind of was like what is that really a thing when i first started familiar familiarizing myself with the ordinance but in all of the commercial districts you see as a permitted use it's plural accessory buildings and then in all the residential districts, it's accessory building. So to me, that is very much intentional. Um, and I think that some, you know, garden shed language would go a lot, a long way. Um, Be shed. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I would definitely restrict the size because I know yes. part of the problem is there were places that had three or four well, and, buildings and mm -hmm. they were used for. Well, and you could also limit it to one. You're allowed one what? in addition to your detached right. garage or whatnot. And, right, right. You know, right. 10 by 10 probably would be. Mm -hmm. I, thought it, I actually thought there was a size. I was not with the 100 square feet. Like, well, as far as, yeah, 100, 100, 100 square, square feet, feet to require a land use permit. Um, you could put up your one detached accessory building if it's under 100 square feet without a land use permit, because that's additions as well. Anything under 100 square feet um, or cost less than $100, one or the two, but you're 
never going to do anything that costs less than a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. So to me, there isn't really a, a regulation in the ordinance beyond that, that deciphers, um, the minimum size to consider an accessory building. Um, so I can get something, you know, drafted up and, for a public hearing next month along with the special use. Um, I would make it under the 100 feet also, just so it, it fits. Okay, I'll, yeah. I would look also to see what the typical size of a lawn <laughs> tractor would be. Right, yeah, yeah, those are. Tractors are fairly good size. Mm -hmm. You might yeah. want to look in the size of the lawn tractor. But a lot of the, oh, lot of the homes in yeah. town yeah. and but, stuff but it, are built on a foot. foot. Right. right. You've got a garage, mm -hmm. barely yeah. a yard. Uh, Right. And then you put another shed back there. Right. And that, but there's also the lot coverage requirements too. So if you have a very small lot, you can only build it out 40%. Right. So there's other checks and balances that help with that. Um, but yeah, it just seems for whatever reason, June was the need for the garden shed <laughs> month, I guess. I got a lot of calls on that. And it just seemed like something that, um, you know, is practical and fitting if the commission yeah, well, if you have an issue with it, yeah, we should address it. I mean, you know, that's like I say, it's like this uh, garbage issue that uh, we had talked about or that the girls had talked about. We should address that also. That's something to look at. We mm -hmm. can't turn our heads. We talk of looking for business to come in. You got no place to put the garbage. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, I, I agree with that. Okay, okay awesome. Good. Thank you. And, and I would also that it, the design and the intent would be not for living. Oh, of course. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I will Yes. I will pull some language from yes. the ordinances that I'm familiar with, right. do a little bit of research on um, like the tractor size. I think that's a very good point. Yeah. And then um, I'll keep the, you know, the hearing notice generic that we're not putting the exact language in there that you guys can finagle it and change it however sure. you see fit during that hearing. See, so. some people want to use it a playhouse for their grandkids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, living in it. Yeah. You know, if they're playing. Well, it, no, you can't live yeah. live in it. Yeah, you can't you can't live in any accessory building at this point unless you get a California. Oh. They yeah. use them to live in. Oh yeah, just look at the show Tiny Houses. Houses are very popular. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ten by ten. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that's all I had for a staff update for you guys. Can't see you have anything. Thanks, Kate. Mm -hmm. Ten by ten, what you Nancy, you have anything? I have nothing. Nothing? No. Okay. No. Member discussion? We're going to start with Bob this time. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I noticed today that uh, all the dumpsters at A&W are by, towards Chip's house right now, so it appears they are working on an enclosure there, must be, because all the dumpsters were on the south side parking lot now. Oh, that's funny. It's at the end of my alley. Yeah. <laughs> they were all blocking the view of Chip's house. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Mick? Nothing for the group. Yeah. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Nobody's gonna like what I have to say, but we have to get <laughs> it done, and we're the ones that are supposed to be doing it. So we have to redo the master plan. We're a year overdue. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, that. I know. I forgot about it too. Somebody reminded me. I wonder who that was. Uh, probably somebody. That it was supposed to have been. It's good for five years. It was supposed to have been done in 2020. So we didn't do it last year. And somebody probably is going to complain sooner or later. Yeah, we oh, and I know it's a pain to do. But the transition with the uh, officers in charge, yeah, you know, that's true. How long are you going to be with us, Katie? You know. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, a, hopefully a while. <laughs> hopefully a while. That's the plan right now, at least. That's the plan right now. Hey, what, what, what year is retirement? Housed. <laughs> long ways away. <laughs> okay, it is online, um, but I just know that it's it's it's. I know it's only good for five years, and I haven't looked at it for okay. quite a while. Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to, and I know that a lot of the things that we had on it, we've done. So we got to get. We we really are going to have to rewrite some of it. Mm -hmm. well, just something else to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, I know. that's true. I, like I thought there was. I thought there was something else that was pending. Why we didn't do it? Pandemic. Because we were waiting for it, something else some to be was completed the first. And some of the stuff was on a, on a state level. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think the state level has has settled down now, and I think we can do it. And plus, we had so much turnover. Right, but I thought there was something, I, maybe it was the, the county plan. I thought there was something that 
County plan's done now, though. So is it approved? I think so. Yeah, the, count, the countywide recreation plan, maybe. Right. Um, yeah, that's think, been approved. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think that was what the spring. I, that we, my, we were waiting on part of that. Some, something told me that, yeah, we that's were waiting that. on, on uh, something else. They said, don't do it now because. Oh, I think it was the trails that Rob. Trails plan. The trails plan that Rob was waiting. Yeah, yeah, Rob was right there. I don't mm -hmm. even know. He, Rob. What he's up to? A while ago, mm -hmm. it's right yeah. below. But it just got finished. Yeah, but it just, just yeah, just yeah. I think it was. You yeah, I think we sent it to um, the DNR and all that for the approval. Wasn't it like just in February? Yeah, it was the final good. approval. Yeah, it was yeah. This, yeah. This winter, yeah, right. So officially, it was I think like February that it was accepted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shelly, you have anything? I don't. Yeah. Okay. I do. I know. Marlene. No. Captain. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, in regards to this problem of the garbage, I would like to uh, suggest someone, who do we have look into that issue? If the girl with the restaurant is having an is issue the, with, the, with the, you know. DDA, maybe? DDA, that's yeah. what I'm thinking, that we'd need to contact the DDA and uh, make them. Have somebody follow up on that, mm -hmm. because if we don't, it's not yep. going to get taken yeah, care of. Well, but I, I'm that not that sure that is an issue, I, I because I have this. I would have heard, because that's my district, yes. city council, I would have heard if the dumpsters were overflowing, and I have not. So, I mean, if this fellow, uh, you know what I'm saying, if he gives her a hard time. Well, I, I think what he's saying dumpster, is, he's, he's going to have to put, take it up there. Well, I, I, mean, if you I think the point that he was making is that when, when people are getting rid of their cardboard and those boxes, I think yeah. that was his issue, not so much the... Well, because every, every time I've gone to the one that is supposed to be at the Manistee Catholic, it, it's not there. So I've literally had to drive like out to the dump with recyclables, and I know that oh, most people are just Actually, wrong. you can go to the one at, at uh, Manistee High School for cardboard. Oh, there's one at the high school now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Back. There always has been. Okay. The, yeah, yeah, true. Oh, I always thought it was at That wasn't always. School. It was just the last few years. Okay, well, it was okay. okay. It's hard to but in the hell, Mark, well, that's what I suggest right. if, you, if you want to follow up. Okay. Fine. If not, that's up to you guys. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, will I will check, but I, oh, those are my I don't problems. have any, believe me, they call if there's an issue. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a painful deal with the DDA. Because people wanted to be able to just throw their garbage out on the street. Right. Oh. Well, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, they've been doing it forever. Forever. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah, I believe it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to like it if they got a haul at some place. Monday morning, it looked like a ghetto. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, drove through, I drove through the other morning, I saw nothing but cardboard all over curbs. And, and it was a financial issue not to allow other businesses to use the blue dumpsters because they didn't want to have to pay double. And that's what they would have had to have done. Uh, uh, uh. Well, now with them meeting outside, so that expands their uh, patron or clientele, mm -hmm. creates more garbage. Mm -hmm. Sure. Where are you going to put it? You know, like I mean, especially yeah. in the summer. Yeah, especially in the summer. Oh, okay. but, uh, all right. Yeah, no, that's it, Marco. Thank you, okay. buddy. You follow up on that. Yeah, I'd um, like to have somebody. You know. I just uh, I see the tabernacles working furiously on yeah. their parking lot. It's looking good. So yeah. yeah. Um, I tell people it's a new hotel. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the building they made apartments. It was the Blue Water Cafe. It's like nothing's been done on that for months. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks like it's stalled. Yeah. H Street is stalled in there. Yeah, H Street you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. the old VFW. The old VFW building. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Working just think? on the interior. Doesn't even look. I haven't seen no. any cars there. Uh, no activity. Oh? Period. For nobody oh. by when I drove by. Mm -hmm. Or how about that character that was in such a hurry here with the, the <laughs> marijuana building? He wanted to have the access because I want my people to work. Is he working on that Quonset hut? Oh, at the Ironworks? No, the, no, the old Century well, Boat it, building. Yeah, the old Century yeah. Boat that we approved. The 12th and Manistee, same Ken uh, Armour? Yeah. 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 Um, Armour, right. I, I'm not sure. I, mean, I went down there about a week ago. There was no cars or nothing was changed, but he was all in a big roar yeah. about, you know, I got to get my people working. I need this, and there's nothing done. Mm -hmm. well, that's him. I think he's got the same crew going to work on that that's currently working on the Ironworks building. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but they that's come in and they problem. tell us something, you know, how he's supposed to believe. And also on the, uh, 
storage unit up behind Goodwill? Yeah. Oh, 12th Street Storage. Um, so I have I had sent him a letter um, because you're not the only one who had complaints regarding that business. He's extremely hard to get a hold of. The numbers provided on his applications are no longer in service. You can't call the main line. They don't have a good website. I gave I sent a letter to the headquarters of the LLC that the, the business is under and the applicant, Joe Hayes. I did not receive response. I gave them a deadline of May 30th, um, which was probably not the greatest idea on my part after a holiday weekend because I haven't had the time to really try to chase him down one more time. Um, I did Google Joe Hayes and found a number associated with him that was not on his applications and stuff. So I'm going to try calling that tomorrow. If I don't hear from him first thing next week, um, I'm going to get in touch with George because there's really no other alternative if someone's violating their special use permit and we can't get a hold of them. What was the complaint? Um, I received a complaint from the city that a woman had actually gotten stuck inside, um, like the gates were locked and she couldn't get it to unlock. And she tried calling and texting the numbers that they provide. And the the text number, I'm not sure what that takes you to, but um, I, tr I did try calling the prompt number as well after I'd been informed of that. And it basically puts you through um, a couple prompts and directs you to the website and hangs up. So I don't know how she ultimately was able to get out of the storage facility. Well, it only goes so far. So if she, she could have right. driven around. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I was but just told that she was stuck inside and- The other part um, is so sandy. I think you'd go down and get stuck. Right. And that soil is eroding where they're mm -hmm. working now. I, I've had three or four people in that area have called one to know what's going on. That's another aspect of it too, because as you guys know, our, our department administers soil erosion and there were um, specific soil erosion measures that had to be taken with it having been an old um, mine, sand mining, from what I believe, uh, previous to the storage facility. So yes, it is on our radar. Um, I am attempting to address, but I just need to get in, in touch with them. Um, because they, they yeah. haven't done any of the landscaping and trees they were right. supposed to do either. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and they're supposed to have mats down on any <laughs> loose soil. There's a lot of things that have not been, a lot of items that have not been satisfied. The islands on the beach are cutting all the money they're making from those uh, houses they built there. Jeez, they've yeah. got quite a few. They're dead. Or sheds. Okay, yeah, yeah, they yeah. threw them all up. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they got, are they all filled or we don't know? I don't know. I know that there's one building in the back that construction isn't complete, but everything... Pretty, pretty close to done. Right, everything appears to be constructed to the site plan as far as structures go. It's just those other outstanding stipulations. The end over fist, the mm -hmm. amount of buildings here. I know my grandson has a unit there and went, the gates don't... You know, they're just wide open. What do they pay? I don't know what they pay. A couple hundred dollars a month. A couple probably. hundred. Yeah. No. Well, well, I, I do have one if I can add. Sure, go ahead. Have we gotten an update from uh, Marty on his parking lot? at uh, the Milwaukee House. Milwaukee House, yes. Um, his permit is under review. I have sent it to the site plan review committee. Um, I've received response from the fire department because it is a, a level one commercial, so it doesn't have, it's all permitted uses, so it doesn't necessarily have to come before you all unless upon my recommendation. I think this one's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just waiting for the site plan review comments to come back to me. I sent them last Tuesday. I think DPW has been quite busy as well, especially with the holiday weekend. Um, I sent a follow-up. Um, this past Tuesday, received a response from the fire department. So um, I will potentially follow up again, maybe one more time tomorrow to see if we can get things moving along for him because I know that um, it's been quite the process for him to get this um, And I think he's still started. looking at the 4th of July or was. I, okay. I just saw him today, but I didn't ask about that because I didn't want to yeah. yeah. Open a can of worms. <laughs> Without having any knowledge of what was going on. So. Yeah, so as soon as I, I receive um comment back from all of those departments, I am ready to get a permit issued for him. Good, good. good. Well, while we're on the subject of Marty, um, that semi, the, the, the trailer part of that thing that he has in, in the lot behind the gas station. gas station that he wants to have a part of. The Connex building, the Connex trailer. He has a trailer behind there. It's been there forever. No, that big so, like a box car. Yeah, it's been there for it's what, been there. Oh. nine months now at least. It's been there almost two years. Yeah, it's is it wild? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Can you not see it from thirty? It's the one on Cypress, right? It's right behind it's, the old gas station. It's right yeah. behind the old gas station on River okay. Street. You, mm -hmm. It's very plain to see. 
Okay. It's been sitting there for a long time. And it's time. like a construction trailer type it's of... It's a pod. It's a pod. Long well, it's a, it's a, okay. like a 40 foot... It's uh, a storage C van. A C van trailer. Yeah, it's a... It's a, it's a Okay, I can, I've actually not noticed that before, but I guess I don't really, I don't go down to the Peninsula District all that often to like come around the building and then, you know, to really see it. Sit there, you see it. Right, yeah, so I'll go look at that. Um, if it's been there for some time, we may be able to get him to remove it. The one thing I'm wondering now is that he's under permit for that site. He may have some leniency with construction allowance. I don't know allowance. part of that permit though. Okay, you're thinking it may be on a different parcel. Right be behind us, actually. Yeah. Okay. A couple houses. Yeah. Okay, I'll look into it. Mm -hmm. There's people living in it. If it's been there for some time, it should be on our new aerial imagery, and I should be able to just look it up real quick and see what parcel it's yeah. on. Is there some kind of interest in something going down on the east end of River Street? A friend has a building down there and said she's, some woman called her and bought a building down in there, and she wanted to buy her building. Oh, hmm. there, there have been a, 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 this may be, I have land, I have friends who have land in, um, land investors, I don't know if it's a scam or not, but they, but they're looking at the local parcel records and just sending out real estate uh, investment companies are yeah, sending that happens out sometimes. blanket letters mm -hmm. to just about anybody that owns property and says, we're buying it. If you need money, we're buying. Yeah. Here's an offer. And while we're in the Peninsula District, um, I noticed that the lot next to the ironworks has got survey flags around it now. And I was wondering why, what Ken was planning on doing with that? Well, wasn't he planning to extend the building down that way? I don't know if he's- Was that know. parking? Is it for parking? Could be. I think I if they marked that- I thought, board I thought there was a bird. Were there, they I they not that. Did they? Okay. It's pretty heavy. It's been pretty, it's Volunteer been parking was there. Is that what? Is that yeah. What they did? Overflow okay. parking. Overflow. Right. Uh, could have been. Anything else? Nothing. Uh, it is 803. 806. Yeah. Um, there you go. 806, 803. I'd ask for an adjournment. Motion, motion. to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. Seconded. First. First. Done. First. Done. First. Done. Seconded. Thank you all.